I decided to try apple cider vinegar. So this stuff. I live with type 1 diabetes and I've been in charge of managing my own blood sugars for the last 27 years. That's a long time and it's not always easy. So you know what? I'll take any help that I can get and that includes trying this apple cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar is pretty easy to get a hold of and it sells for around six to eight dollars depending on the size in my local store. So I figured it would make an interesting experiment. I know some people use this stuff for cleaning but I was more interested in its potential blood sugar regulating properties. So I've been drinking it for the last 30 days. It's in no way magical but it did enough that I think I'll continue to have it as part of my routine. So hang tight, I'll show you why, what timing worked for me and also discuss some of its side effects. Apple cider vinegar is and should be considered a supplement. It's in no way a replacement of our diabetes treatment but I decided to try it out because of its promise of a potential blood sugar lowering effect and it's vinegar. Seems harmless enough, right? And it might seem a little silly but there are actually a few studies that support that there might be a benefit. There's a lot of might here <laughs> but most of these studies are for people living type 2 diabetes and we do need more research on the effects for people living type 1. But this study showed improved A1c and fasting blood glucose for people living with type 2 diabetes. And this meta-study involving people with type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes showed a small positive impact on after meal blood sugars. And finally this study that showed significant improvements in fasting blood sugars and overall insulin sensitivity for people living with type 2 diabetes. I obviously cannot do a controlled clinical study but I can experiment and that's what I did. I chose this apple cider vinegar because it's raw, it's unfiltered and it has the mother preserved. The mother is a colony of beneficial bacteria vital to the fermentation process. Many seem to attribute the benefits of apple cider vinegar or the presumed benefits of apple cider vinegar to the mother and there might be some truth to this as the mother counts as a probiotic. I started out with two tablespoons diluted in water before breakfast and then after two weeks I switched to drinking it before bedtime. Interestingly enough I found the timing to make a big difference for me but more about that shortly. An important note on safe consumption. You should always dilute your apple cider vinegar in water or another type of beverage. The high acidity level can damage your teeth, your mouth and your throat if you consistently drink it without diluting it. My friend Tom from the YouTube channel Type 1 Talks also suggests that you clench your mouth with water after drinking apple cider vinegar just to protect your teeth before you brush your teeth. I took detailed notes before as well as during this 30-day experiment and I also wore a CGM a continuous glucose monitor that measures my blood sugars 24 7. So let me show you what apple cider vinegar did for me. I found the timing of when I drank the apple cider vinegar to make a big difference. As mentioned I started with two tablespoons before breakfast and that was with the hope of seeing less of a blood sugar impact from breakfast. That was a bit of a flop. Based on the studies, that's what I had the highest hopes for. The potential of apple cider vinegar is that it can possibly delay stomach emptying, which then slows down the release of glucose into the bloodstream, aka a smoother blood sugar increase. Well, I didn't see that. I ate the same thing for breakfast every day for 30 days, drank my apple cider vinegar and went about my day. And my blood sugars were very similar compared to when I did not drink the apple cider vinegar. My breakfast is not high carb though and that might have been why I didn't see that much of a difference. It's about 18 grams of carbs in total and most days I didn't even drink coffee. The thing is though most days I don't see a huge spike in my blood sugars after breakfast. You can see a graph here of the two weeks where I drank the apple cider vinegar in the morning compared to 90 days before. Since it's a 90 day graph it's not as choppy but you should be able to see here that there's not much of an increase in the AM up until noon. It's really interesting how keeping a lock book and really paying attention can open your eyes to what's actually going on versus what's in your head. I had this perception that my blood sugars were spiking after breakfast every morning but looking at this I realized that might just have been in my head. So this whole topic is probably a good one for a separate video but for now let's get back to the apple cider vinegar. As I mentioned up front it is a supplement and it is not a replacement for our diabetes management. So I think for me for now I'll just stick with my low to medium carb breakfast and my manageable blood sugar increase. So not much of an upside in the morning for me but the good news is that there were 
only really one downside for me, and that was I found this to be a very acidic way to start my day, but nothing too serious. When it got somewhat more interesting and why I think I'll continue drinking apple cider vinegar is when I switched to drinking it in the evening before bed. I often have an issue with dawn phenomena. It's a biological response where the body will release glucose into the bloodstream in the early hours, usually between 4 and 8 a.m. And for me, it usually hits me around 4 to 6 a.m. And with this, I really think that apple cider vinegar made a difference. So what happened was that after I switched to drinking apple cider vinegar in the evening, I started to have repeatedly low blood sugars overnight. And ultimately, I had to lower my nighttime long-acting insulin. And not only that, I also started to have more low blood sugars during the day. So something was definitely going on during those two weeks where I drank apple cider vinegar in the evening. And you know what? It still is. It seems my insulin sensitivity has gone up. And I must admit, I'm a little surprised. I was hopeful, but I was expecting to go on here and not really being able to report any benefits of apple cider vinegar. And it's unclear what's going on. I discussed this with a diabetes educator and she speculated that it could be apple cider vinegar's probiotic properties that were doing something for me. I also went looking for answers and I found this one study, it was only for type 2 diabetes though, but it did indicate that apple cider vinegar might be inhibiting the body's release of glucose, which actually ties in pretty neatly with my dawn phenomena, as that is a biological response where the body releases glucose. And it seems that apple cider vinegar for me is helping with that. But honestly, it could also be a little bit of wishful thinking <laughs> combined with very dedicated locking of my blood sugars, my meals, and my insulin. I do find, and I think that's the same for most of us, is that when I'm very dedicated, when I'm locking everything, paying attention, not really winging it as much, I do tend to have better blood sugars. Another explanation could be that I increased my water intake. So since I was diluting the vinegar in a big glass of water a day, I was getting an extra glass of water. And water can also help with blood sugar management. It's a bit of a stretch for me though, since I'm already very focused on my hydration. I think my results, although not mind blowing, are still promising enough that, you know what, I'll continue drinking apple cider vinegar. Also, I had no side effects, so why not? But we need to set realistic expectations about its effects as for most people, it's probably going to be minimal. And there are a few musts when it comes to apple cider vinegar. Always dilute it with another beverage. That can be water, salsa, or tea, or you can mix it in to your food. And be aware that consuming too much apple cider vinegar can really wreak havoc on your teeth, throat, and stomach because of its high acidity content. Also, the use of apple cider vinegar may not be recommended if you have any of the following health concerns. A history of stomach ulcers, gastroparesis, low potassium levels, kidney disease, a history of bulimia, any health or dental conditions in your mouth or throat. It's always recommended that you talk to your medical team before starting something new, even if that's just vinegar. And there are also some potential drug interactions that you should be mindful of, such as insulin and medications that stimulate the release of insulin, lenoxine, and certain diuretics. Let's be safe, okay? Apple cider vinegar is, as I've said repeatedly, a supplement. So we're still in charge and we still have to do all the heavy lifting of managing our blood sugars on a day-to-day -day basis. And there are a lot of things that we can do to make a life with diabetes a little easier, as well as everyday things that we can do that'll have a meaningful impact on our blood sugars as well as our A1C. So if you're up for making some meaningful changes, check out this video where I go over 19 things that you can do to lower your A1C. And while you do that, why not check out my membership option Subscribe to my channel and remember to turn on notifications. That way you'll never miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.